the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola7 Owen, we Kwama Donda, the chief ever shall. Yes, this is uh, the Ola7 podcast show. Welcome to yet another uh, segment, you know, edition of On The Spot, where we get to interact with, you know, your celebrities, your public figures, you name them, you know, soccer stars, politicians, makeup artists. By the way, tonight I'm hosting one of the, you know, most, should I say most, <laughs> or the only one from Zim, who is doing wonders in the Hollywood, uh, her name is uh, Jack. Jacqueline Mugido. So she's here to tell us more about her brand. You know, recently she um, she did some makeup on Japrese and Japrese was looking like somebody else. People were like, <laughs> it was all her work. So she's here to tell us more. Um, hi, Jacqueline. Oh my gosh, I love this. <laughs> and I love this set, Ola. Congratulations. Wow, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you and for uh, you being the first guest uh, ever since our, um, you know, our recent launch, yes. uh, which we did on the 19th of January. Yes. How, how does it feel? I feel so special. Uh-huh. I, fe- I feel like I'm in Hollywood in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Zim Hollywood right here. Yes. No, thank you so much. So uh, you're based in uh, Los Angeles? Yes, in LA. LA. Yes. Wow. City wow. of Angels. <laughs> <laughs> La La Land, we call it. La La Land. Yes. So how is how, how is Los Angeles? I love Los Angeles. Uh-huh. So are you um, a Lakers supporter? No. Uh-huh. You're not? I don't support any sports, even uh-huh. though I work a lot with all with, these guys. Okay. Because I don't understand it, so I don't want to pretend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I understand it. I don't get it. Even soccer? I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay. So I used to do the Lakers actually when Kobe Bryant was, uh-huh. was still alive. Yes. And I would go to the court side because I'd be touching up um, all the, 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 the respective yes. entertainers mm-hmm. and sometimes mm-hmm. the podcasters. Yes. And I wouldn't understand it. Like by, like, by half time, I'm like, bye. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> uh, that's, that's Jackie for you. Jackie for you. Jackie, you look like a comedian, man. Maybe it's because you work with a lot of uh, comedians. No, I'm just I'm just a happy person. Yeah, I, I like I like the vibe. I I'm like just that. happy. I like that. So you moved to I mean um, um, St. Louis in uh, when when you were 18 years. 18 years old. Wow. Tell us more about that. So I moved to St. Louis when I was 18 years old, mm-hmm. and I was going to be a vet because mm. I loved animals. Yes. The truth is, I really didn't know what I wanted to do mm. because I was not really academically inclined. Yeah. I was an artist. Mm -hmm. So I just chose and I was like, I like animals, so I'll be a vet. (laughs) And when I got there, I quickly realized, yeah, you have to read a lot. Mm. And that was not me. My attention span was all over the place. So there's no way I could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you started reading? So I started going to school. And then my sister quickly realized I was not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to make it too. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'd always been class like this. (laughs) <laughs> and I was in college. Yeah. And she was like, this is America. What do you want to do? Exactly. And I said, well, I'm not really sure. I want to do something in beauty. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that I wanted to do makeup. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I went to what we call cosmetology school, which is more hair. Mm-hmm. And it's less makeup. Yeah. Because in those days, they didn't really have makeup. Mm. You had to go to Hollywood. Wow. And I was in St. Louis. Yeah. So yeah. I just started doing hair and mm-hmm. I did that. Yeah. And then I worked yeah. for Clarence Cosmetics. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I watched Oprah. Wow. And they did a makeover on yes. Oprah. And I yes. said, I want to do that. And she was like, wait, what? And I was like, I want to do, do makeover. That. Exactly. And I went to Hollywood, visited a couple of schools, mm-hmm. and then came across a really expensive school, mm-hmm. which is like mm-hmm. $30,000. $30,000? $30,000. Like a month or what? No, no. The whole year. The it whole was like year. A, it's the, the whole course for the Jeez, whole year was $30,000. It's so much. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Mm. But hey, you know, um, with the kind of makeup that I do, yeah. you'll understand why oh, it was $30,000. $30,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how long have you been in the U.S.? I've been in the U.S. now for 30 years. 30 years? 30 years. No, you joke. Yeah. 30 years. And you've been coming to Zim? Yes. I started investing in Zimbabwe mm-hmm. about 12 years ago. Wow. So I'm in Zim at least five times a year. 
Five times a year. Yeah. So that's good because some people, you know, they come uh, back to Zim after five years. Yeah. Some come after 10 years. It you is, know. It is uh, I, I've been so blessed mm -hmm. and it is my responsibility to change who we are. Wow. In terms of our careers mm -hmm. and what we learn from the outside mm -hmm. and bring it back mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, for sure. <laughs> my parents taught me well. Wow. And you've been married, you know, um, for the past... How many years now? I've been married for <laughs> 20, 20 years. 29, 29 years. I'm going to my 30 year. Oh. Yeah. And you got married when you were 18 years. I got married. I'm 50 years old now. So, you know, uh, what has the marriage life uh, been like? It's up and down. Listen, hmm. the reality mm -hmm. is you adapting each other's personalities mm -hmm. as you go along. Yeah. So it's going to be up and down. My husband's very understanding mm. and I'm a free will and... Mm -hmm. For you to be married to somebody like me, you need to be very comfortable in mm -hmm. your skin mm -hmm. because I am an artist. Yeah. And we are just very flamboyant. Mm -hmm. And so it's been, it's been real, you know, like sometimes we happy, sometimes he's sad, sometimes yeah. I don't like him mm -hmm. and sometimes he doesn't like me. <laughs> but the most interesting part is I've always been told by my father-in-law mm -hmm. that the trick is for one person to stay in love yeah. while the other one is out of love. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. Isn't so it? How many kids do you have now? One. One? I have a 16-year-old. Wow. Yes. So uh, any, uh, are we looking forward to have another one? No. Anytime soon? Are you kidding? I'm 50 years old. Why would I be having kids at 50 so years old? So one is okay? Old? Yeah. Good enough. I'm good. <laughs> that's what I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you've got money. You've got money. I've got money. I have a business. Okay. And if you are doing your own business, I mean, I'm in Zimbabwe and I'm doing business in yeah. Zimbabwe. Do you know how difficult it is to have yeah, a business in Zimbabwe? Yeah. So it's up and down. I'm not rich. You know what? Let me just ask you something. Sure. You know, this is something that I got to discover, you know. Mm -hmm. Most people, or maybe should I say billionaires mm -hmm. or millionaires, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they do have very few kids. Mm -hmm. Then you get to downtown, you get to see people with uh, 12 kids, mm -hmm. 11, 10, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without money. Mm -hmm. What do it's, I think about it? Yeah. Well, you have to understand, all this happened long time ago. You would have kids so kids can look after you. Mm. So it is very much a cultural thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because you're hoping never, never, ever, somebody is going to do good. Mm. So yeah. that's why a lot of people will have a lot of kids, right? Because yeah. it's almost like a, a, a chance. Mm -hmm. So the, the less kids you have, you're not going to have a chance to get out mm. of the opportunities oh, yeah. that are not given to mm -hmm. you but there's going to be one kid that's going to make it, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we like what we are. Mm. But then the, the more you travel and the more you get out, listen, being overseas, you can't afford to have a lot of children. Yes. There's, there's no supportive structure. Mm -hmm. Kumba Kunuk, there's a lot of supportive yes. structure, so yes. you can afford yes. to do that. That side is different. That side is different. You are on your own. It's your husband and you and mm. your children. Mm. You know, there's, and babysitters are expensive. I mean, having a babysitter, that's like $30 an hour. $30 an hour? Yeah, babysitters are making a lot of money. Here in Zim, it, 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 it max, it's like $300. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. It's $30 an hour. They don't clean. They don't do anything. Okay? Just they come babysitting. In to babysit and they babysitting your children for a couple of hours and they're out. <laughs> 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 so that side, it means house helpers are also millionaires. Oh my God. It's, it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, to have a maid, you can't right. have a maid. Right. If you're not a millionaire. <laughs> You're not having maids. Yeah. Here, you guys are living in luxury in Zimbabwe. I'm going to tell wow. you that yeah. for sure. And we don't really uh, you know, appreciate that. Yeah. Mm. You know, everybody, teaser, don't teaser. Be it Zim. <laughs> My is, people are moving. People are moving. And, and let me tell you, it, it's not as bright as you think it is. Yeah. Listen, you yeah. know, being overseas is an equalizer, mm -hmm. right? When I first went overseas, mm -hmm. I was a maid. Wow. I worked for somebody else mm -hmm. who was very much a racist. Yes. You know? Oh, racist. Are you kidding? Yes. Oh. Yeah. You know, I was young. And, and how did you then manage to overcome that? My mom. My mom used to always say to me, Kuti, you, you're working for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. You need to change your mindset. Yes. Kanaori Po, you need to say to yourself, how long am I going to be here? Mm -hmm. And what am I going to learn? Yes. Right? So my mom used to say to me, at that time, I was really embarrassed mm -hmm. because I went to, you know, an all-white school here. Yes, yes. And I was like, oh, my God, my friends are going to find mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. exactly. You get embarrassed, which is really silly, yes. right? Yeah. And then when I was there, my mom said to me, you need to imagine that house as if it's your house, mm. right? Yeah. And then open yourself up. And these varungus that I was working mm -hmm. for, yeah. 
I did open myself up when I allowed myself not to be so upset about it because mm -hmm. I knew this was a temporary, this yes. was a stepping stone, yes. right? Stepping stone, yes. And then I started imagining myself in that position and I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I learned about yeah, the fork and knife. I learned about appetizers. <laughs> I learned about yeah. all those things. So you didn't know how to use fork and knife? Well, I did, uh -huh. but then there were different ways to do it. Do I mean, it. you in a foreign land, yes. not everything is going to be the same. Exactly. And if I'm in a foreign land and I'm going to be exposed to everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, the English do things different. Exactly. Americans do things different. Yes. Yes. So when you are in all those environments, you can't think everybody's going to do everything the yes. same. Yeah. It's different. It's different. So you moved to, I mean, you left Zimbabwe for US, you know, where you were set to, you know, start the veterinary. Right. So then, uh, what then happened? Because what has Then all of a sudden, uh, beauty artist, uh, makeup artist. Right, because I was good at art. Mm. Right. So this school that I went to, it wasn't just a makeup school because everybody mm -hmm. always thinks makeup, like you know, my eyebrows and do yeah, this, exactly. and then you're out there. There's mm -hmm. different genres mm -hmm. of makeup, mm -hmm. right? So I did special effects, which specializes in transforming a person and allows me to work in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and you know, make somebody look old and make somebody look young, um, scratches, yes. um, you know, somebody's leg mm -hmm. looks like it's chopped off. Wow. This is what I do. Wow. And, you know, I make you sit in a, in, in a movie house and you escape. Mm. That's what I do. Wow. That's, so that's this cute. is why my school is super expensive. Mm. This is why when you see Ja with all those things that exactly. he has on, yeah. it's basically magic. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> So how have you managed to balance work, family, and social life? You know, I believe uh, your work is, uh, you know, very uh, demanding. It is very demanding. Mm -hmm. So right now I work with Food Network, right? Because as you know, chefs are That's rock stars. Food Network. Yes. And I run about, um, about 12 shows. 12 shows. And I'm the head department for those. So mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. Put in different people. That's awesome, Bob, when, you know, yes, this is us. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's really amazing because, you know, I'm normally the only black person, mm -hmm. right? That side. And the only black person. The only black person within the food network genre. And yeah. I will hire like maybe one or two like black people to that do hair, mm -hmm. right? But most of it is are people, uh, you know, that are Caucasian. Mm. And I, I'm so. I'm so proudful. Like yeah. I'm so, I've got yeah. such pride yeah. because every single time I'm around mm -hmm. these celebrities, mm -hmm. I'm always talking about Zimbabwe. Yes. I'm always like, I'm from Zimbabwe. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you're proud of it. I'm so proud of uh -huh. it. I'm so proud and of I, it. I wonder sometimes when, you know, uh, some of our Zimbabwean, uh, Zimbabweans, where they get to America, yeah. England, it's unfortunate. they start, you know, uh, speaking ill against, about right. their country. Never. I wonder. Never. Because you know what? Apana Nika, mm -hmm. it is perfect. Yeah. Nowhere. Mm -hmm. Home is the best. So for me, I always believe in blessings, right? Mm -hmm. My parents said to me, you live in the country, mm -hmm. you have to give back. Yes. So whatever I have learned, can you imagine if all of us came with all our talents back? Mm -hmm. My goal for Zimbabwe is to expose ourselves to so much special effects. Mm -hmm. Kuti, and a Nigerian, everybody comes to this country and say, I want to mm -hmm. shoot a movie, mm -hmm. right? It's a billion dollar yes. industry. Yes. So why can't we have part of the pie? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. entertainment is a billion dollar industry. Very true. We should be able to penetrate that, not mm. just in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. outside Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So people like myself that are in Hollywood have to expose Hollywood to Zimbabwe. Mm. Wow. And if I don't do it, nobody's going to know where Zimbabwe is. I mean, mm -hmm. listen. I how are you going to do that? Or how am I doing yeah. that is the question. So like, for example, I'll give you an example. I, one of my favorite people that I ever worked with, which everybody would probably know, is Salvador mm -hmm. Stella. Oh, yeah. And I did a Rambo. Rambo. <laughs> and I remember him, and I specifically talk about him a lot. One, because he's known, and two, he's a legend. Mm. And I remember when I met him and I said, oh my God, we love you in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. He said, Zimbabwe? Yes. You people know me. Oh. And I said, are you kidding? You're yeah, Rambo. Exactly. I said, legend. even in the rural areas, kids are like Rambo. Rambo Everybody exactly. wants to be Rambo. Yes. So right there, he was like, I want to go to Zimbabwe. What mm -hmm. do you guys have that's amazing? And I'm like, oh my God, we have Victoria Falls. Exactly. You know? Exactly, yes. I mean, hello, mm -hmm. who has Victoria Falls? Exactly. So, so those conversations become, I mean, Snoop Dogg, I mm -hmm. talked to him about it. Wow. All the celebrities. Yes. yes. You know, and this is how we penetrate mm -hmm. And, and this is how people know. Like, I just, I went and brought a, a chef, Carla Hall, mm -hmm. and she came here. Yeah. 
and she's exposed to Dana Obama and everything. Wow. And she was like, oh my God, Zimbabwe has everything. This is amazing because wow. people hear so many bad well. things about us. You're doing well. You're doing wonders, uh, Jackie. This doing is very well for your country. This is what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you should collaborate with the um, uh, Zimbabwe Tourism Authority. 100%. You know, yeah, yeah, in terms of, you know, just, you know, putting Zimbabwe out there, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, exposure as well. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because you know what it is? I think that everybody wants to see an example, mm-hmm. right? Sure. Because when people imagine Africa and they imagine us, mm-hmm. right, they just imagine the extremes because people ask me questions like, yeah. oh, so you guys have water, mm. you know, in the bathrooms yes, and stuff. Yes. And I always joke around like, no, obviously not. We have people that come and wash us. <laughs> <laughs> So using my social media and showing what we have, yes. like a podcast like this, this yeah. is going to be really awesome, exactly. right? Because yes. somebody's going to be like, oh my God, they have a buzzer. I want to be on more last show. Yes, true, true. So yeah. Then everyone is asking, Jackie, mm-hmm. how did you get to Hollywood? How did I get to Hollywood? Yes. Um, so I took out a big fat loan mm-hmm. and I took a chance. I Googled everything. I researched everything. And I realized I need to be where it's at in order for me to do what I need to mm, be doing. Mm, so mm. TV, film is Hollywood, yeah. right? If I wanted to do magazine makeup, mm-hmm. I would be New York. Yeah. So I, my husband, actually, he's the one that took out a loan from his work. Mm. And then we... He's very supportive, man. Oh my God, he's so supportive. Yeah, Kitani yeah. is yeah. like my one, number mm. one. No, seriously, he's my number one support. Yeah. He's my biggest cheerleader. Yes, Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so, and we applied to the school. Mm-hmm. And um, I paid the loan off in a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. And my child. How many years? um, It took me probably about six years. Six years to pay it I mean, that's $30,000. And that's just $30,000 for school fees. And we're not talking about the kit itself, you know, because there's a lot of things that you have to use, right? So, yeah. And there you are. And there I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a a part where you mentioned about uh, you being a maid, you know, as your first job. Uh So I want to find out from you, uh, Jackie, you know, like how did that experience shape you to become the better person you are today? I don't judge people's works. Mm. Because the person that is working that so-called not so great job is the person that has the ears to hear Mm. and see everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They have so much power. And for me, I was like, wow, because... Mm -hmm. We always think the CEOs have so much power. Mm-hmm. It's your maids that have yeah. a lot of power. Wow. Because they hear everything that you say. They can either use it against you, you yes. or they can use it for you. Yes. Yes. So for me, I look at people and I think to myself, you can be anything that you mm-hmm. want to be mm-hmm. if you just let and dream mm-hmm. and think and work on it. Yeah. No limitations. Mm. Powerful. So, you know, based on your journey, you realize that uh, success is not solely measured by personal achievements. Yes. So, uh, but also by empowering others, you know, along the way. 100%. And uh, tell us about the mentorship, you know, program, which is aimed at nurturing, aspiring makeup artists. So, I don't know if you know this, but when I came to Zimbabwe to introduce makeup 11, 12 years ago, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people didn't really know about it. Only the affluent knew that there was an IST larder and then they would use it. Mm-hmm. So for me, the goal was to educate a woman, mm-hmm. right? For her to be able to look after the family and educate another woman. Wow. So I know people can't afford mm-hmm. school, right? Yeah. So I try my level best to do mentorship programs where people come in. You know, I've basically changed my store into... Okay. A, a training hub. Mm. So you come in, you learn, and, and I encourage you to go out there and do it. Like, if you know right now, the yeah. people that are making more money mm-hmm. than doctors wow. are makeup, makeup artists, artists, hairstylists. So I heard, why? Why is that so? Because it's a service. Mm. Everybody wants to look fabulous yes. and great, yes. right? So if you're charging somebody 25 to $30, $50, mm-hmm. depending on, you know, how experienced you are, mm-hmm. think about it. You're making a killer. Wow. Yeah. So you're doing for free? The mentorship or people pay a certain amount? So, so far it's free because the truth is nobody can really afford it. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people that want to take shorter courses and want a whole kit, Mm -hmm. I'll charge them. Mm -hmm. So, but 
most of it is really free. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the Oprah that doesn't have a lot of money. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't have a lot of money, but you do. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm basically a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. And you don't have to be a very big company. Yeah. You know, for, for me, what makes me so proud is we've solely, as a company vault, changed the way Zimbabwe looks at makeup. Mm, sure. You sure. know, all these makeup artists that you see, all mm -hmm. these people that you see makeup, mm -hmm wearing makeup, I look and I smile and I'm thinking, hmm, wow. my, my parents up there would be very proud. Very true. You made a change. Very true. So, um, you know, in, in an interview you did with uh, People Daily in 2020, mm -hmm. you said, and I quote, I choose a career in makeup artist and specialize in a master's program mm -hmm. that include beauty and special effects. Yes. Cross cut. So when we talk about, uh, you know, makeup, uh, do we have types of uh, makeup? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So you are going to have different types of genres. Mm. So for example, people in the office, there's a different type of makeup for that, okay? And what that is, is kind of toned up makeup because mm -hmm. when you are in the office, you want to be able to articulate the messages. Mm -hmm. So if you have dramatic makeup, you won't be able to do that. Mm -hmm. That makeup is solely supposed to be for presentation. Mm -hmm. You want, so people love to look at good looking people. Yes. People like to look at people that mm -hmm. are put together. Mm -hmm. So that's office makeup. Yes. And then you have wedding makeup, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Where the person needs to look angelic, and everybody thinks she looks gorgeous exactly. in the magazine cover, exactly. right? Uh -huh. And then you have editorial makeup, mm -hmm. which is more dramatic and a little bit more creative okay. because you're trying to sell mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And then you're going to have pretty much makeup that is for clothing, so it's kind of toned down. Yeah. You're going to have special effects makeup, which is what I do. Mm -hmm. And then you're also going to have TV makeup, which yes. is a little bit more exaggerated. Mm, yeah. So, you know, this is why when you see people wearing all those different type of lashes mm -hmm. and, you, and men are like, I don't like makeup it's not like you guys don't like makeup yeah. it's just that a lot of people are wearing the wrong makeup and mm. then that kind of throws you off oh, a little yes, bit yes yeah so it's wrong makeup guys yeah it's wrong you makeup. all like makeup but it's wrong makeup. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> because because you know what it is i remember when i first started right the zimbabwean men hated me mm. because they used to say what's going on yeah, yeah, like like what's deception. going on yeah, right? like deceiving us. yeah and the guys would be like oh we don't like this one i'm like you know you like it <laughs> you know you like it. You just don't know how to articulate yes. this is not the makeup exactly. that I want. Exactly. But you want your woman to look uh -huh. Wow. That's just what it is. So how would you, do, how would you describe your creative process when, I mean, designing and executing special effect makeup right. um, looks? So this is what happens, right? When one of them goes just as a makeup artist, you're just waking up and going, mm. you have mm. to re do your research, mm. right? In order for you to get into a movie house and get lost mm -hmm. within the movie and get emotionally mm -hmm. involved, you yeah. need to do your research. Mm -hmm. So if we had to do a movie where somebody is crying, mm -hmm. right? I need to look and see what kind of makeup they have mm. oh, yeah. and look at the occasion of that makeup. So I need to do my research. Um, when it comes to special effects, I need to understand and know when somebody is bruised, mm -hmm. what kind of a bruise, the shape of the bruise. Yes. All those things are really important. Wow. I need to understand you know, the different bone structures. Mm -hmm. I need to understand math, which I was really bad at, Yes, but I needed to understand it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's really, there's a lot that goes, that's why you have a script, yes. and then you do your research exactly. of a script. Exactly, You know, mm -hmm. because I need for you to sit there and get lost mm -hmm. in the movie and not think, ugh, so that's what it is. So it's not about when we make up a very, I mean, crucial role to play, especially uh, a it's movie. very important because let me tell you something. If you were an actor, right, the first person an actor sees is me. Mm -hmm. They come in, they prepare themselves. Yeah. I have to put them in their form mm. in order for them to perform. Yes. Okay. So not only am I doing that with my personality, mm -hmm. I also have to be smart enough to say, when do I talk, when do I not talk, because yes. they're reading a script, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I also need to pick up the, on the energy as like a therapist. Mm -hmm. And then when I transform them, they need to be confident, com comfortable and confident in yes. that role. Mm -hmm. Because when they go out there and acting, they don't want to be asked, do I look good? Mm -hmm. Is this the is this the what I play? Yeah. You are solely responsible for mm. all those things. Mm. You're the first one on set, yeah. and you're the last one on set. Mm. To make sure everything yeah. goes well. The glamour part is being exposed and being in all those beautiful mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, 
you're still a maid. Wow, you're still a maid? 100%. How <laughs> I? Because you are, you know, if I have a big celebrity, mm -hmm. I'm touching them up. Exactly. I'm doing all those things. Mm -hmm. Anybody that does a service, mm -hmm. you're pretty much a maid. A maid. <laughs> Because I'm going to service. Exactly. I'm going to pay for the service. Exactly. Still a maid. Still a maid. Mm. So you did your press and makeup on his trading uh, character. Yes. He was yet zero, you know? Yes. <laughs> How was the, 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 uh, the experience? Oh my gosh, it's so mm. awesome. So f first of all, he's mm -hmm. really a funny person. I don't know if you guys know this, mm -hmm. okay? Super funny, super kind. We also found out that we're related, by the wow. way. Wow. Oh, we're related? We are so related. Oh. He called me and says, Jackie... <laughs> We related. I said, yes, this makes so much sense. We have the same personality. Yes. When we get together mm -hmm. and we start thinking of things to do, yes. we laugh at ourselves. It's so funny. We're like, Sha, then we can do this to them. Yes. Oh my God, exactly. then we can do this. Exactly. Because we want to make people laugh. Wow. And wow. we want them to escape from mm -hmm. everything that's going on. Yes. Yeah. How did you come up with that uh, you know, idea of that you know, makeup in Japanese? So I wanted him to look really different mm -hmm. and I loved the movie with Eddie Murphy and the professor. Oh yes. So I took that character and decided <laughs> to make him that character. I think because remember I got a big Murumo exactly, exactly. and then you know he had that uh -huh. that Kama Afro yes. and with the glasses. Uh -huh. So I felt like that would be him because yeah. he's a giant, right? <laughs> yeah. And it was so great because also it allowed him to go kumbare mm -hmm. and nobody recognizing yes. him as a celebrity. Yes. Wow. And he felt great. Ooh, but that was a, I mean, a very creative idea. Yeah. That was a good idea, brilliant idea. I was like, is this jump? Oh my God, wait until you see our second thing. It's going to be even more brilliant. Serious, you, you're working on something again? We sure are. Wow, I can't wait. I can't, I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. <laughs> so how many local artists have you worked with uh, um, locally here in Zimbabwe? Uh, doing special effects or just yeah, doing makeup? Yeah, yeah. Makeup. Just him. And other events? I haven't really done anybody else. Mm -hmm. Everybody else who is a local artist is more like a friend. They'll come mm -hmm. to my store, buy a couple of products, but uh -huh. I've never really done anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So can anyone afford you, Jackie? Ha! Huh. Can anyone <laughs> afford me? So the truth of the matter is, uh, not a lot of people can afford me, but mm -hmm. this is why I have Vault, because I trained the girls so mm -hmm. you can afford me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Guys, you afforded the yes. service through exactly. the people I'm training. Okay. See? So everybody could afford it. <laughs> so maybe those people are going to be like, okay. Yes. Like, yes. I'm sure they will be charging like, I don't know. Because they'll be like, no, look. The mentor. Well, listen, um, when you, because this is what I always tell my mm -hmm. people, right? You want to charge what you are at that moment in time. Mm -hmm. Makeup takes years for you to perfect. Mm -hmm. Saka, you don't want to just come out of my hands and start charging a lot. Yes. Because and then guess what? If you do a bad job, it's not going to work. Yeah. Saka, you charge according to experience. Mm -hmm. right? Listen, I'm bit in Hollywood. Bit. bit by bit? Yeah, I have experience. You're paying for my experience, mm -hmm. right? I'm not the best makeup artist. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this, I will give you the service mm -hmm. and I'll give you the best service. Wow. You can't pay for experience. So you charge for, I mean, per set or what? So a production company comes in. The average makeup artist that works in Hollywood will make from the rate, if they, if they experience, from $800 a day to $1,000 to $2,000 a day. A day? A day. Oh, no, no. I not know to do but anyways, it's okay. It's sorry for another day. <laughs> right. The lowest rate is $650. 650 okay. The lowest? Yes. A day? A day. And let's say these guys are shooting a movie. How long, I mean, do they take to write a movie and also you'll be like on the set every day? Um, you're probably on the day. No, because if you're in the union, you're on, you're on the set probably five days. A week. Five days. Right. So. And then if you're shooting a movie, it's about a month. Sometimes it's three months. Three months. Mm -hmm. So you'll be charging the day, the day. Mm -hmm. They charge per hour when you're the doing hour. a movie. So you, you know, sometimes an hour you're at $80, $90 or $100 an hour. Ish. Yeah, so you're making money. You're yeah, making money. That's what my judges are making money. Are you making money? <laughs> Do you know how expensive it is to live in Hollywood? Yeah. It's very expensive. Very. Like or a the two, accommodation. Yeah, the two-bedroom apartment is $4,000 a month. Hey. Two-bedroom. Yeah. 
And uh, Futa has a big two bedroom, and then Kuita Yimbaya, you have to pay taxes on it, and a house, a two bedroom house. You said you have to pay taxes on it. Yeah, yeah. Like the one uh, recently, uh, our, our, our hey, finance uh, minister, you know, wanted to introduce that tax. Absolutely, because that's the only way a country operates. You have to pay taxes. Oh. Marod, everything. How do you think those things are paid off? So people were like, no, how, how, do I, how am I supposed to pay tax? You know, you have to pay taxes, guys. Mm. That's the only way we're gonna be, we're gonna survive. Wow. Yeah. So, you have worked with uh, so many established uh, uh, companies like Nike uh, mm -hmm. and television channels like Food Network, mm -hmm. S, um, ESPN, ABC, and, uh, MTL, Fox. Uh, MTV, I mean, yeah. oh, Fox. Hey. So, Washington, mm -hmm. also my celebrities like um, Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm, <laughs> and I can't believe I'm sitting right next to you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Anna Harris, Alon, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, John Legend, mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone, we talked about him mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Uh, that's Rambo. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder, you named Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Ah, uh, even the least one about George Lopez, Jimmy Fox, Iwe, <laughs> Jakey. <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> so, how has been the experience? It's been out of body experience. Mm -hmm. Because in Dover, we have a trip at TV. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when you see them, because for you to be able to do that and then be from here, mm -hmm. it's attainable. Mm. You know, because I always feel like if you see me, you see yourself. Exactly. So everything is attainable. Mm. You mm. have to dream. Mm. I dream big. I, yeah. I, I dream big. Mm -hmm. You have to dream big and totally believe it's going to happen. Mm. You know, we, we so paranoid as Africans. Yeah. We need to stop being paranoid. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because guess what? Limit us Your example's right here. Mm. I'm here. I'm touchable. Yay. Sitting right, ne right next to Ola. Yes. Guys, the next, the next show will be in Hollywood. Trust me. We'll be I'm, in telling, Hollywood. I'm telling you. <laughs> you have to believe it, Ola. It, yes. it, 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 and it can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. The great part about it is social media. Mm -hmm. You just don't know who's watching. And yes. you don't know what yes. can happen. Yes. You, can say you that just again. have to expose yourself, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. It's kind of around those circles. Yes. You need, you need to be able to adjust. Mm -hmm. That's what I always tell my girls. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell my girls, Kuti, it doesn't matter where you come from. Mm -hmm. Just learn to adjust in your environment. You mm -hmm. can't be who ha, he, ha. Yes. Kwese, kwese, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Which is like, uh, there's times when I'm loud and like, oh my God. Exactly. And then there's times when I'm around people, I'm like, oh, hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, I want to know, uh, Jackie, imagine being in that, uh, you know, close proximity to someone, um, you know, uh, who you used to watch and uh, my celebrities is on TV. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the first days uh, you were like, oh, hey, Mwari, Dimire. And the sheets are up like this, you know. Now, I've said, Kisa, I'm go rub my shoulders now, like every day, you know. Sometimes I can be like, your first time experience. So, I told myself mm -hmm. that I never want to forget that experience mm -hmm. because when you get, when you forget that experience, you get a big ego. And you know, to have a copy. Yes. So, for me, that excitability, that mm -hmm. nervousness, I keep it going. Mm -hmm. I'm always nervous and excited. Wow. I'm just confident in my work, mm -hmm. right? And but you're always nervous. Every single time, don't go to Naimwar. Jim Makandi pins up. And I get so excited about it. Mm. I remember the first day when I worked with Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. I, just let me say the right things. Mm -hmm. Let me do the right things. Protect me. Yes. And most of all, let me affect his life and represent my country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it happened. It oh my God, it happened. He's, <laughs> he's so great. Like I remember we were doing a, a music video and this is like right at the beginning of the, when he started being, doing TV. Mm -hmm. And but he's so used to saying words that are not so great for yes, women. Yes. And at that time, all those explicit words mm -hmm. were very natural. Yes. You know, be this, be this. Mm -hmm. Second day, touch her up here. And then I was touching up somebody. Mm -hmm. and got yes. Then come on, it was B. He used the B word. Yes. We are on the party. We are on the makeup. She can not stoop. Uh-uh. This is a queen from Africa. Wow. You don't talk to her like that. Oh. And I was like, thank you. I'm yes. a queen from Africa. Yes. You definitely exactly. don't talk to me like they that. They know. They you know. They know. Ah. You know, yeah. any yeah. my drugs or whatever. Yes. Then I got to go to the house. I can't give me those things. They just know. You know, the way we carry ourselves. Yes. I know. That's that's great. And yeah. from the celebrity you, you have worked with, uh, Jackie, mm. uh, I mean, so far, mm. uh, what, uh, who would you say, Ooh, 
mm. was the most you know difficult celebrity to work with and mm-hmm. uh, uyo angari i mean most interesting i i think when you say somebody is difficult can you have to ask yourself putty what is being difficult because mm-hmm. sometimes difficult is interpreted very differently mm-hmm. There's people that want what they want, how they want, and it's my job to give them that. Yes. So I wouldn't call that difficult. Mm. I haven't worked mm. with anybody that is difficult. I've yeah. worked with people that are demanding mm. what they want, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. Because that's my job, mm-hmm. right? Um, and what was the other question? And the most interesting person you've worked with? The most interesting people, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, out of everybody, my celebrities that I would say are the most interesting people mm-hmm. are the people here. Yeah. The people that started this brand, mm-hmm. the Volt brand. Yeah. And those are the people that are in areas that nobody concedes to be high areas mm-hmm. because those are the people that have taught me mm-hmm. what it's like to feel appreciated. Yes. So all the kids there and ngwa rukubsika vano uya and they support the brand and then they get their makeup and yeah. they get that excitability. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Yeah. Right. You think you're excited? I'm ex- I'm more excited because yeah. when they see their faces denied it. Yeah, like, exactly. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so, which celebrity do you wish to I mean, uh to work with now or in the future? Which celebrity do I um probably Oprah. I've worked with Gail. Mm-hmm. But Oprah? Yeah, Oprah is my girl. because that's how, that's why I started. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to have that full circle. Yeah. You know my friends were like you kind of did with Gail Gabuzi Shama Maria Oprah and I said no no matter Oprah. Oprah watch oh yeah yeah. So really Oprah. Is. Uh-huh. So matanga in my connection that you must keep up. Um you know Hollywood is funny because Nasi ndino gona kutaura izvo zvimangwana mane gona ndinedza kuti she's a guest for Food Network and I touch oh. her. Oh yeah. Because there's so many guests that yes. come on food. Oh, yes. People food is very universal. Yes. And again, chefs are rock stars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do do my rock stars. Ah, I like that. Mm-hmm. So uh some people when they you know they make it in their respective industries uh, out there. Mm. Uh they tend to forget uh, their roots, mm-hmm. but if as for you, mm. uh you decided to give back, yes. you know, uh, to your community yes. uh, through the Vault Cosmetics um mm-hmm. Academy, mm-hmm. which you were talking about to cover water right so. So Panam was reason to say about the the academy. Maybe right. you can just share a little bit more information right. about that. Right. Okay. So the brand itself Yakatangwa Nema Zimbabweans. Mm-hmm. I decided to make a cosmetic brand that was going to be climate adaptable. Mm-hmm. Right? And yeah. was for us, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And the Zimbabweans are the ones that would tell me at school days at school day is today, right? So in that I decided that I was going to teach the craft itself mm-hmm. yeah. and then adapt to what everybody's saying. Mm-hmm. So the academy mm-hmm. itself started off what happened is when we were with the wind but avanga singa bezvakanaka. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So I decided you know what mm-hmm. I might as well train people for eight months and then mm-hmm. they leave. Mm. Right? And eight I months. encourage them to go out there mm-hmm. and learn. Yeah. Right. Yes. So this is what we do. Mm-hmm. So again we have one that is eight months for free mm-hmm. and then we have one if you want to finish in three months or yep. whatever you pay for it and we'll okay. give you a whole full kit mm-hmm. yeah oh nice so your brand has grown over the years yes what's your secret to success um appreciating one vakatanga brand and for me it's the zimbabwean woman yeah that's the success because without them mm-hmm. you're not going to be successful mm-hmm. so for me everybody's my friend yeah every single person that uses my product I will always make them feel like I know them. Mm-hmm. So, because Jackie, she's a celebrity. Tell you we are a celebrity already. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay, she's not even a celebrity, you big up a celebrity. And because una kumanya, I know Jackie ada to manya izvi like now, but <laughs> it's okay. I just have to maybe ask three more questions. Though I had many questions I know. to ask, but I will I just know. try to uh, because Jackie wants to go somewhere else. But anyway, um uh, Jackie Drango zio kuti you know what are the different uh, the, the different between um products ajeki and jeki the brand there's no difference it's me so this is what happened i had to call jackie mugido because i was fighting for the name in america mm. because my brand is international international right? yeah yeah and so it was volt cosmetics and they with a volt cosmetics ear mm-hmm. and then somebody said to me you can't be paying so much money for this volt and go to jackie mugido mm-hmm. the problem is my zimbabweans they feel like they own me mm-hmm. and they were like this jaho who did jackie cosmetics yeah. susu is volt for life uh-huh. so that's the only difference so what can we expect from you jackie in the coming years oh my gosh 
what you're going to expect is for Zimbabwe to be the hub that is ed an educational hub for special effects. We want people who are outside the country to come mm -hmm. and learn special effects mm -hmm. and let us be the place where we are actually making the prosthetics, right? Mm -hmm. And then for education, I want the makeup artist to work outside Zimbabwe. Mm. It's very important. Yeah. And not feel like you have to leave and, yeah. and work somewhere else. Yeah. Because of the exposure of the internet, mm -hmm. I want people on the outside to say, I want that makeup artist. Yes. And then, oh yeah, Oshand, mm. that's the goal for me. So have you managed to take anyone, uh, maybe artists, um, celebrities, or even makeup artists to Hollywood? Not yet, mm -hmm. right? Because what happens is a lot of people come and work and, they, and they're not patient. For me, you have to be patient. You have to be patient enough for me to see, what, is it worth for me to take you? Mm. And nobody has been that patient yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Put their own thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. you have to put in the time. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I want to do, tourism for me is very important, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I want all these celebrities to come here because the more they come here, everybody makes money. Yes, sure. So that's another thing. So this right. is my goal. Wow. You know, I, I love that. Zimbabwe has to be on the map. Mm -hmm. We have to expose ourselves. Everybody needs to make money. Wow. So your parting remarks, uh, uh, Jackie? Yes. Yeah. Stop being paranoid. Mm. To be paranoid. We are society, a paranoia. Trust, accept, and express yourself. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's after you. Mm -hmm. so let's stop being paranoid. Not everybody is after you. After you. That's so far powerful. So profound. From Jackie Mgido, from all the way from United States of America, Los Angeles. Ah, what you, know, from Los Angeles to Zim. She's our Zimbabwean daughter. We love her. We're so proud of her. Thank so thank you so much, Jackie, for coming. Thank you. Okay. This, this is, is the All awesome. Seven Podcast Show. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You know, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at DJ All Seven. Who knows? Next time I'll be in Hollywood with Jackie. <laughs> yes. Abana, who knows? You are. You are. Okay. I am. <laughs> So, guys, I'll be back again next week. And I want to say many things, guys. Nitness support your Magadi Bako launch. It was very successful. Amazing one. A glamorous event. Eey, our sponsors, thank you so much, guys. Well, we love you so much. Kwanas, Tumbo Mirra Baraba, thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. It's the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.